Hi, my name is Mary Spender and today I'm at Anderton's and I'm kind of in search of a new pedal board, a few new pedals themselves and maybe even an amp, but I think I need to find someone who might be able to help me. Um, so let's take a look around. Excuse me, can you, can you help me find a new pedal board? I probably can, let me see what I can do. Uh, Look who I stumbled across. So, uh, Little Birdie tells me that you need a new guitar amp and some yeah. pedals to do your thing with. Yes. Um, should, we, should we do amps first? Okay. Come on. Yeah. So we're, we're kind of in the amp section. Uh, you need what small, this is what? Club kind of gigs, recording. What, what's it, what are we doing? Hmm. I think I want to start with yeah, club gig rig, okay. portable, just, affordable. Just you carrying it. Just me carrying it. Um. So and affordable. Yeah. In what sort of roughly ish affordable? Uh, un under a grand. Okay. So plenty plenty of budget to get. Yeah. A plenty good. Of budget to get. And are you looking for? A really great clean amp as a pedal platform, or are you looking for something with some switching and some maybe a, a gainier side to it, or you know, is it something that you just like the look of? I'd like to take a look at orange amps because I know that they do have a good clean tone, yeah, even though they're predominantly used for other yep. things. So, if we could take a look over there, well, let's start up there. Yeah. So, TH30, 30 watts, all valve, 30 watts would be. Um, Plenty big enough to give you some clean headroom at a club gig level. Yeah. If you went much down from 30 watts, say you went down to sort of the 5 to 10 watt range, mm -hmm. that's where you'd probably still have enough driven volume for a club gig, but you'd, you'd struggle on the for the clean headroom unless you were, you know, miking up and stuff like that. Um, there's no reverb in this amplifier, so, you know, from a budget point of view you know that may be something that you've got to think about yeah um, and uh, I think it's important that we just do a you know it's not these aren't <laughs> light so little, uh... yeah I mean oh yeah I think I could carry that from gig to car well look, let's so that's that, that the um, oh man you're stronger than you look <laughs> <laughs> it's like um, I work out. Um, so the other one I wanted to show you, which was the new one that they released this year, was the Rocker. Uh, and there's a Rocker yeah. 32, which, there's a 15 as well, and there is a 15. There? Now the 15, again, I'm potentially shying away from just because mm -hmm. it's 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 going to want to be driven to do the kind of uh, volume that you want and may not give you that sparkly clean sound. Okay. So the 32 yeah, is quite cool. interesting because it's got two speakers in it and a stereo power section. Mm -hmm. So if at any point your pedal board starts to use stereo effects, um, it'll it'll split the signal into the two speakers to give you that kind of um, modulation or stereo spread that'll make the amp sound bigger than it really is. Okay. Um, it's a similar kind of weight to the, yeah. to the TH30. I had a little feel and I can, it's, yeah. So, I mean, we could take so, both of these and you could kind of get an idea. They are um, slightly different sounding. You've got a little yeah. bit more EQ on the rocker. Mm -hmm. um, I say that, you've got a little bit less and a little bit more. The, the clean channel has no EQ, so just turn it up. Uh, and the dirty channel obviously has some EQ. On the TH30, both channels have a little bit of EQ. Uh, what else is different? They're pretty similar other than that, so... Well, unless you want me to take a look at something else well, I and compare and contrast and... I mean, if you're... I do like orange amplifiers, there's, there's, you know, but I think you pointed out They've probably got, they're probably more famous for their gainy reputation yeah. than they are for their, their clean reputation. If you want to go to, you know, who, who, who has the best reputation for just cleans, yeah. you'd be looking at Fenders, yeah. um, maybe even Voxy stuff. So you, you could look at something like a Fender Blues Junior, yeah. coming a little bit lower price than these, um, or a Vox AC15, mm -hmm. again, 
a little bit lower price, you know, you'd be talking the five, five to six hundred rather than your seven to eight hundred kind of dough. Yeah. Um, I don't think Marshall is for you. No, I've tried Marshall before. Uh, I know what we should do is we should take one orange and one something else. Yeah. A Blues Junior, which you can get in, you know, a, a classic tweed or just a black with a silver front like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, that, I can tell you now, if popularity is anything to go by, these are the biggest selling bowel amplifiers that, that yeah. you know, in the world pretty much. Let's try a Fender. It's got Fender a preference of colour, tweed or black? Tweed, let's go Tweed, tweed. Mm -hmm. going old school. Pedal wise, I think I want to stick to a nice little overdrive, mm -hmm. maybe a full range overdrive, I think I have a pedal in mind for that. Okay. And then a nice reverb. Re reverb we'll only need in the orange. orange. Yeah, so the reverb for the orange and then maybe something a bit weird and wacky. Um, Just to add a bit of colour to... Okay, so we've got quite a bit more change in the budget if we go down the Fender route. But on the assumption we go orange mm -hmm. and you want reverb, so we're going to do at least between 100 and 200 pounds on a reverb pedal. Yeah. Drive pedal, drive pedal could be anything. There are some really good sounding drive pedals for 50 or 60 pounds, or you can spend, you know, well, two or 300 pounds. Absolutely, you could get a great, yes, you'll, you'll absolutely need a drive pedal with the Fender, so that yeah. might be an interesting one. Um, so weird and wonderful. Now, well, let's go, let's go, let's go through the, the, the type. So Echo, you know, a delay pedal, I always like delay. Um, yeah. All your modulation effects, so chorus, flanger, phaser. Chorus being probably the most subtle of those three effects, so just that slightly detuned, modulated sound. Uh, you got, I don't think you want. I don't think you want to go crazy, crazy in terms of you know things like auto wazzle. Um, okay, well, let's go with the delay. I think what else? What else? Well, yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll pick some. I mean, herein lies the. You know, what are you, what do you, how are you feeling at the moment in the sense of like, you know, we're in Anderton's and we're looking at our one of three pedal cabinets, I know. you know, with probably a thousand pedals in total in them. Are, are you? It's quite overwhelming <laughs> in terms of what to actually choose and decide. And you can't really tell how anything sounds until you plug it in. Are you, are you drawn by certain brands that you're familiar with? Are you just going to be open-minded if the price is right? Or is there, you know, stylistically, are there some that you think, oh, that looks really cool. It would be nice if I liked that. Um, um, let's go with sort of um, open-minded, but a reasonable price. Okay. To... Does your music use different flavors of drive? You know, would you, for instance, have uh, one kind of drive that was like a mildly cranked valve amp and then another like a fuzz kind of sound or are you just going to stick with that one? In terms of my music, probably stick with the one. Yeah. Keep it quite simple. I think I'm inclined to go, let's just keep this simple. So let's look yeah. for, a, for, a, for a nice, you know, natural sounding drive pedal, yeah. not too much output, uh, a nice reverb, a nice delay yeah. and no, do you, I mean, do you want to, to put a compressor in there just so that you can see? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm. I know you. I know we've, we've talked before. You've said that you've had a compressor and you didn't really feel the need to use it. But I, you know, just from watching you play and knowing that you you sing and play guitar at the same time, yeah. my feeling is that actually a compressor would really help you keep the guitar at a constant sort of level within the mix whilst you sing. Yeah. So. It's only one certain pedal that I don't usually, because I think it's got a slight inbuilt compressor itself. So Right. So. Well, I, I'll get it. I'll get a compressor. It just sounds like that. Did you want to, you know, I, I, I think most people who start off with pedals end up going, they're just going to go in a Tesco's carrier bag with a bunch of patch leads, yeah. which is completely fine. Um, you know, if you wanted to look at a board that we could fit four pedals on, yeah. you know, 
doesn't have to be crazy. But actually, the boards aren't the expensive no, bit, it's the power supply is the yeah. expensive bit. Yeah. Yeah. But you don't have, you know, you could get a board for 40 or 50 pounds and not worry about just literally have a like a, a power supply that daisy chains up, which probably makes more sense yeah. at this level. Yeah. So go there, and then we're probably doing every, and I'll try and keep the whole thing, board and everything, sub, what, 300 quid? Yeah. So that, okay, we might not be able to do that with the reverb as well, but anyway, we'll do our best. Lee has very kindly chosen me some pedals. Can you explain? Yeah, so we, so we, we, we took the Blues Junior and the Orange TH30. We've set them up here side by side with an AB pedal um, so that we can switch between them. Now, obviously, the, the pedals that are on the floor here are potentially um, pedals that might make it onto Mary's board, with the exception of the AB pedal, because obviously we won't have any need for that if we've only got one amp. So starting at this end, uh, the first pedal that we're going into is the Tone City Comp Engine. And I think that uh, this will be like the unsung hero pedal on mm -hmm. the board. You can, you know that you can turn that on, sing and do all of your sort of fairly intricate picking stuff yeah. and it'll stop any kind of rogue uh, spikes yeah. in the notes coming out when you're picking. So I, I you know, I think for, for what that costs, 40 quid, it's a just an easy choice to put on. Ye oldie fashion blues driver, you, mm -hmm. you asked for a good quality, affordable, you know, sort of open ranged drive pedal. Well, yes, blues driver is exactly what that is. And we've got that set with the gain about halfway up. Um, so there is more if we want it. Mm -hmm. uh, then we're going into an echo pedal, Mua Re Echo. Again, it's just a, a very affordable 55 pounds, um, simple delay. I've got that mixed in. Um, with a relatively, you know, ambient kind of delay. Hall of Fame reverb may be unnecessary. Hall of Fame reverb we won't need and we won't use when we're using the Fender because it's got the we're going to use the Fender's built-in reverb. Um, but the TH30 doesn't have reverb, which is why we've picked the Hall of Fame. The Ditto. Now, actually, in fairness, so those four, the four main pedals plus a pedal train nano board, yeah, which comes with a really cool. Um, bag so that you can velcro your pedals to here all the all the velcro that you need comes in comes with it pop it in there leave it cabled up all the time so that when you get to a gig you know guitar in one end amp in the other and you're good to go so basically this board and the first four pedals um, was pretty much your 300 pound kind of budget mm -hmm. um, but we chucked the ditto in just because who doesn't want a ditto? You know, it's like loop, loopers are such a fabulous pedal. And actually, um, if you opt with the Fender, you won't need the Hall of Fame reverb. So actually, um, cash-wise, cash -wise, it probably mm -hmm. covers it anyway. So I'd like to hear you kind of just play like your normal stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I'll add pedals in, tweak noises. Uh, it would be probably quite cool to get a loop in there as well so that you can solo over the top of it and that's perhaps when we'll add the blues driver in and we'll switch between the two amps you can kind of get a feeling for what it's sounding like as can you know the the people on youtube land and then you know let's everybody comment on because you're not mary's not buying this today this is this is a this is about putting a shopping list together so who knows it might even be useful in the comments section below for you guys to say where you thought mary sounded best um so Stop playing. Take it away, please.
sounds i know both good both sounds for different things that's the well, well yeah so you're you know this is going to be your or you know this is my suggestion for your rig I, I mean clearly i think what's kicking in the biggest tonal difference more so than any of the pedals is that is absolutely just changing between the amps yeah H have you got a is there an instant like oh that was the sound that i felt was nicer i feel this um the fender is definitely the more traditional sound and i feel like the viewers will probably choose that as a as a, okay. as a favorable one and but I, I think the orange is really interesting to use it clean and i do like having the choice of control of reverb because sometimes i, I play some songs which um have reverb all the way through or i switch between yeah. so having that choice i know you, i could control it you've always got the option to you could turn the reverb off on there and just and use, use a, a hot yeah, pedal yeah exactly i'm i i thought and it might be the speaker because the, i know generally that the, the 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 speakers in the blues juniors have a i mean this is a much much more affordable amplifier and i know some of the ways that that fender drive the price down is to use a more affordable speaker yeah. so it's quite common to see people right. just ch you know swap out the speakers in their blues juniors for something a bit uh, fuller sounding, mm -hmm. but I felt you know that the, the the orange was quite a lot stronger in the mid range, not in a honky kind of way, no. but in, but in a just a way that I felt that you know certainly in a band mix would probably allow you to be heard better. Okay. As a solo artist, it, it it's probably not necessarily important to have that mid-range it's just about whether you prefer the sound or, or mm. not um i mean of course what we haven't done on the on the th30 is go you know for when you're in your um your other band that you're in your sort of nine inch nails tribute band um so you know obviously we've got you know a much heavier dirty channel here if we want it So yeah, so we couldn't do that out of the Fender unless we either bought a, uh, probably, I don't even know with the blues driver cranked up. I mean, that, this is as maximum we can go. Actually, it's closer than I thought it would be. Um, but it's, there's probably nice the well, better yeah. pedals that you could buy yeah. to achieve that super high gain noise. So, well, I mean, look, you should just carry on noodling. We'll just leave that, you know, because I, 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 I there really is no right and wrong. Well, the only, the only thing I'm leaning towards the Fender is it is going to be, you know, given that you don't need the, the Revo pedal with the Fender, it is going to be the best part of probably 300 pounds cheaper. Yeah. Uh, it, 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 it's money. deceptive as well. This is 15 watts and this is 30 watts. So purely on paper, uh, this one is going to be louder, but in real, you know, live usage, the, the mm. actual volume difference between 30 and 50 is, is marginal. Um, yeah, 
and also being mic'd up and stuff in a live setting. Yeah. So do you want to, you know, any thoughts about pedals that you uh, thought they'd be better or you're thinking, you know, that, that you thought would be different or are you quite sort of, you know, it, could you see yourself having a, a little rig like that? I'm quite interested in the Hall of Fame because of being able to change the reverbs yep. with the app, which we haven't shown. Nope. Um, but I, I sort of wonder the versatility of that and uh, trying to, I wonder if you would be able to replicate surely the sound of a Fender using that. You, you think you could get, what you mean in using the Hall of Fame? Would you? No, so that the, the, the the app. No, no, no. This it's a perfectly good question. So, that, so the idea of the Hall of Fame Mini, which is the mm -hmm. one that we've got, is it only it only has one knob on it. Yeah. So a little bit like a, you know, the, the reverb on the Fender only has one knob on it. But of course, there are um, a plethora of different types of reverb from uh, different rooms. They're trying to emulate different right, plate okay. reverbs, the types of reverb you get in a Fender. So the idea is, is that using the app. You, zip, you sort of ping into that pedal, what kind of reverb do you want me to be? Yeah. And then you just turn it up and down from here. So it's not going to fundamentally change the tone of the sort of tonal characteristic of this amplifier, mm -hmm. but it, it could add, for example, a very bright reverb or a very dark reverb or a, a, okay. ver, a very cool. um, studio sounding reverb or perhaps a, a more natural sounding reverb. You know, that's that's the idea of the what you can do with the Hall of Fame Mini. I think, you know, I, I don't get the impression it was designed for people to sort of go, right, for my next number, I'll just load up a different yeah, reverb. Yeah, you have to stick to it. Well, you don't have to, but I, I, I don't. Have you ever seen the, the how it works? It's it's absolutely mind-blowingly weird. You you go to your, you know, you can do this via 4G. Mm -hmm. You go to the, the tone, the TC tone, what's it called again? Tone print website. You choose the one you want, you download it, and as long as you hold the speakers of your phone to the pickup and the and the pedal is connected to the sorry the guitar is connected to the pedal, the the phone literally goes like an old ZX Spectrum noise for about oh three seconds. Yeah. And your new reverb is in your pedal. So it's kind of like technologically mind blowing that it can do that. But I still think that all that you would do is for the first day or so of having this amplifier, you'd sit and try. 10 different reverbs and, and go, the that's the one I like the best. Yeah. And, then and then you'd be done. It's done. And, and all you're really doing, depending on the venue you're in, cool. is going, do I need more or less of that from the knob that's on the pedal? Um, I'm, I'm kind of, you know, comfortably smug in myself in sort of thinking. Yeah, I feel like you nailed I, it. I, I don't really think that there's anything there that I've gone, oh, that's disappointing. Mm. I mean, you, honestly, drive pedals. You spend a year I know. trying all the different drive pedals in Anderton. So at some point you just end up going, yeah, blues driver or tube screamer or or something yeah. iconic and just go, I'll just buy that. Yeah. Um, I thought it was any good. I was really, you know, again, I, I, when you had the, the clean stuff looped through and then we were using the blues driver just to give it that little bit of edge. I mean, one of the things I did was we recorded the loop with the compressor on, mm -hmm. but then I took the compressor off when you had the blues driver so that so that actually it did allow all the dynamics in your playing so i, I wanted to take the dynamics away when you were doing mm -hmm. the rhythm part so that it was nice and even but then when you're doing the the, the solo -y part you almost want to be able to hear every nuance of the plectrum you know if you want something yeah. to be soft or picked hard you know but i think we should just you know I, just keep playing I, keep playing and then at the end, you've got to literally go, that's the one, you know, so that the people, and they can all go, don't do it, Mary, by the other <laughs> one, or whichever. So, yeah, to, you know, do another, okay. do another, uh, another loop.
I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting to like the Fender better and, and, oh. I was expecting the Fender to be fuller sounding. Yeah. And I wasn't expecting the orange to have such a pleasant to listen to um, clean tone. Uh, so I personally, uh, yeah. Wow. Well, I don't, I'm not I know, I'm not, gigantically. I'm not, yeah, I'm not that surprised because um, orange are great amps. Yeah. And I've, I've actually wanted an orange for a very long time. I just didn't. Didn't know whether it was yeah. suitable enough. You can cancel your gym membership as well once you buy the orange, can't you? You're just taking that to the car and back <laughs> twice a week. <laughs> we'll be, that, that, that'll suffice. I know, weightlifting. Yeah. Um, but um, uh, yeah, no, I, I, I liked that a lot. And, uh, and I honestly, I, I think that board is, you know, that's a very, very usable little board that, you know, that'll fit on a, you know, relatively tiny pedal board. And, we, and we'll daisy. You said we'll just literally daisy chain this. So we, 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 you know, five pedals is usually about the maximum that you can do on a daisy chain. Yeah. Um, but with a decent quality actual wall wart kind of thing, it'll have no problem powering those. Actually, I say five. There's only five if you take the ditto. Um, and I, did, I can't remember. Do you say you you use a looper live, or do you tend to just use a looper for practice? A uh, looper for practice now. Right. I, so, I, I used it live when I played acoustic guitar yeah. for percussive beats. Yeah. So actually, mm. well, there you are. I know. So Nailed it. All you need now is somewhere in the region of 1,200 quid. Have I done that right? I don't know. 1,100. Somewhere in the region right. of 1,100. Yeah. As opposed to if you'd gone down this one, it would have been more like 900. Which I think is, you know, I mean, again, 1,100 pounds is... A lot of money but it is. ultimately I guess if you are out gigging and you're earning 100 200 pound out of every gig yeah I expect most you know if you sort of said what does a plumber need to buy I you know to go and be a plumber mm -hmm. I suspect the ratio of having to do you know 10 jobs before you've paid for the tools that you had is probably not <laughs> terribly out of kilter um, so there we go there we are if you'd like to be on Anderton's TV and have me as your personal shopping assistant, <laughs> I'm incredibly expensive. He's very good though. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's really uh, been it. I've been the captain. I'm Mary Spender. And uh, yes, tune in next time for more frivolity on Anderton's TV. See you later.